Hey everybody, welcome back to Word Balloon, the comic book conversation show. John Suntress here. A couple things before we get into our show. First of all, if you've got any questions or comments on the show, email me, john at wordballoon.com. Follow me on Twitter, that's where I do most of my talking, at John Word Balloon. You can follow me also on Facebook, under my name, John Suntress, and also uh, the Word Balloon Network. Uh, tell a friend. I also am on Instagram, under Word Balloon. Uh, if you get this show... Uh, via podcasting platforms, please rate it or write a review if you don't mind. Um, you know, you can write me a bad review. You can you can give me bad stars, but uh, like me as well uh, as as uh, the opportunity presents itself. Also, I have a YouTube channel, Word Balloon. Uh, please go there and subscribe. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. I have over 500 uh, subscribers. I'm trying to get over a thousand. I'd like to add more video content. So uh, please consider doing all that to support Word Balloon. And now, back to the show. Terrificon, Connecticut's biggest Comic-Con, returns to Mohegan Sun, August 9th to the 11th. Meet Billy D. Williams, Val Kilmer, Doctor Who's John Barrowman, and the voices from Animaniacs and Thundercats. New England's largest guest list of comic book artists from DC and Marvel Comics is at Terrificon on August 9th to the 11th at Mohegan Sun. Tickets on sale now at Terrificon.com. Hey everybody, welcome back to Word Balloon, the comic book conversation show. John Suntress here, welcome to the weekend, and I can't believe I'm uh, talking to Billy D. Williams today, Lando Calrissian, Bingo Long, God, uh, Nighthawks, uh, so many great movies, uh, Lady Sings the Blues, and Ma- Mahogany, uh, Cold 45 Pitchman, uh, what an incredible career, and what an honor to speak to Billy D. Williams today. Um, he can't talk about episode nine. I should tell you that right off the bat. Uh, obviously, uh, they're always very uh, careful about uh, new releases, but he can talk about Lando, and we get into the origins of Lando and what Billy D uh, did to create the character, and uh, a lot of other memorable roles as well. I mean, uh, I, I've been a fan of Billy D's uh, since the early '70s. The first thing I ever saw him in was a great biography movie called Brian Song, all about uh, the life of Brian Piccolo and his great relationship with Gail Sayers. It was James Caan and Billy D. Williams in uh, 1972 or 1973, a television movie that uh, really resonated with people. And man, I'll tell you, if you were a Chicago Bear fan, you saw Brian Song and you cried your eyes out and you cried with Billy D. Williams uh, as uh, we watched Brian Piccolo ebb away. It's, uh, it's an amazing story and uh, Caan and Williams really uh, you know, did, a, did an incredible job. The man's had an amazing career, and it's uh, real, uh, really an honor to talk to him. He'll be at Terrificon, and uh, I'll see him in a couple of weeks, as uh, you have the opportunity as well. If uh, you're in the area and planning on going to Terrificon, or maybe this interview will make you want to go and, uh, and meet the man himself, Billy D. Williams, on today's Word Balloon. It's all brought to you by the League of Word Balloon listeners. Thank you greatly, League, for your support via Patreon. Uh, Word Balloon is free, but if you want to help the cause out or you like what I do here... Is Word Balloon worth a, a dollar a month to you? If you think so, then uh, you can subscribe by uh, going to Patreon.com, clicking on the uh, Patreon ad on WordBalloon.com, and that'll take you to my Patreon portal. But thank you greatly for your support, League of Word Balloon listeners. This episode is also brought to you by Aftershock Comics, one of the industry's fastest-growing independent publishing companies. They're promoting a lot of great books. They are calling this year the Year of Reading Dangerously. You've heard me talk about uh, some of their fantastic books, like Chris Sabella's Trust Fall and Cullen Bunn's Knight's Temporal coming up soon, Joe Pruitt's horror anthology Shock, Tim Seeley's Dark Red. They uh, join the ranks of great Aftershock books like Marguerite Bennett's Animosity and Garth Ennis's wonderful books like Jimmy's Bastards and A Walk Through Hell and Cullen Bunn and Juan Doe's Dark Art, Baby Teeth from Donny Gates. Great stuff, man, and uh, they're going to continue to make amazing releases here in 2019. And we're talking to those Aftershock creators about their books, just like uh, today's conversation with Billy D. Williams. Now, in the weeks ahead, we'll have another Aftershock creator on to talk about one of their books, but you don't have to wait. Go to their website. You'll find full story descriptions, preview pages, and the diamond codes on their books and how to order them through your local shop at AfterShockComics.com. All right, without further ado... Let's uh, get into this conversation with Billy D. Williams. Uh, man, I'm telling you, this was amazing. I can't believe I got this opportunity, and uh, I'm happy to share it with you now. Let's get into it. Billy D. Williams on Word Balloon. 
Billy D. Williams, welcome to Word Balloon. It's it's an honor, sir. Longtime fan, even before Star Wars. Uh, Brian's song, I think, was the first time I I saw you perform, and uh, I still cry every time I see it. Oh yeah, well, it's a classic. It's a very very special experience. Did you get to talk to Gail Sayers a lot in preparation for the role? Yeah, we spent a little bit of time together. He, he's a pretty reticent kind of guy, but uh, we became. Uh, uh, in a very quiet way, friends. Um, but uh, yeah, so but it was a very, very it was a wonderful experience. I don't know if you've had a chance to stay aware of. Uh, you know, he's he's not doing too well, unfortunately. And he's a friend of mine. We became friends in the '90s. I have a big background in sports radio, uh, and you're right. He is he is kind of a a quiet man. But I always felt a, a man of great dignity. And uh, it's it, it does hurt me that he's he's in the state that he's currently in. Yeah. Well. It's unfortunate, but uh, he will always be remembered in a wonderful way. You know, I know you can't talk about Episode Nine, but I am curious about just back at the beginning when they first approached you to play Lando. Can you can you tell us about that experience? Uh, well, the you know they came to me. I was on the contract to Barry Gordy at the time, uh, the, the owner of Motown, mm-hmm. uh, and that was right after doing Lady Sings the Blues. And uh, and mahogany mm-hmm. and uh, they uh, approached me about playing Lando and of course at that time I uh, there were all these wonderful filmmakers around like um, Spielberg and Scorsese, Coppola, uh, George Lucas and so when I realized that I had an opportunity to work with uh, George Lucas that uh, that was a, a real uh, a plus in my life in my career so it was a, and also at the, at that time um empire strikes back was uh was being directed by um Irv Kirshner mm-hmm. so and that so that was a, a a big deal for me to work with uh, Kirshner and, and to work with George so that's pretty much how it all started he and George I mean Kirshner came to my house and and we sat and we talked, and uh, we talked about Eastern philosophy, and oh, wow. because he was he was very much into Buddhism, and that that period in my life I was sort of exploring that all of that myself. So we we hit it off, and we had a real good rapport, and uh, and that was pretty much how it all happened. How much it was on the page as far as Lando's character, and how much do you feel you? You know the spin you gave him coming up. You know you're you're one of the kings of cool, Mr. Williams. I mean, I remember quite well in the in the seventies, and I, I do want to ask you about the films with Diana Ross and Mahogany Lady Lady Scenes the Blues. But you really, I mean, the the Cold Forty Five campaign. I mean, you really were, and it's um, so yeah. I mean, knowing all that, I mean, it seemed like it was kind of a good fit for you. But how much was there on the page? Oh, well, I, I I pretty much uh, created that character. I mean, what was on the page were uh, the things that uh, uh, you know. There are certain things uh, that I used and worked with, like the cape. <laughs> the fact that the uh, his name was Calrissian, and I thought, wow, an Armenian name. I thought that was very interesting. So I sort of uh, took those two ideas and. Sort of uh, played around with it and and um, employed my own personality, obviously, uh, and my own feelings about the character. I mean, I mean, there were certain key points about the character that I so certainly played on. The fact that he was a rogue and he was a a, um, a gambler. Uh, all of those things. I just wanted to make a kind of a heroic, kind of roguish, heroic kind of uh, individual who had a lot of charm. So, you know, I mean, it's a combination of things. Sure. And, but certainly, it's me. Yeah. <laughs> in, that, in, that, in many ways, it's, it's and, uh, me. So. Well, I got to tell you. Um... And, I, and I wanted to make him bigger than life. Excellent. You know, and I and that's how I always all of the characters I've ever played always have that aspect or that element of being bigger than life. 
completely agree. Another great sports film you did back in the day, uh, Bingo Long and the Traveling All Stars. Uh, right, yeah. One of my yeah. favorites, sir. I, we, I met you ten years ago, and I'm like, look, Lando's great, but I got to tell you, Bingo Long, man, that's my jam. That was <laughs> that was fantastic, and what a great cast and a a, a great tribute to the Negro Negro Leagues and and all they represented. Right. Well, that was one of my favorite characters. I love Bingo. And you and uh, you and James Earl Jones, great chemistry, man. Oh yeah, we 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 had a wonderful chemistry. Beautiful film, absolutely. Um, and also, I really appreciate the fact that because uh, certainly you're of the generation where a film like the Star Wars franchise can uh, typecast you, but it clearly wasn't an issue with you. And I love the fact that not only coming up this December in Episode Nine, whether it was a game or the BBC radio adaptation, or uh, audiobooks, it seemed like they came to you with, uh, you know, playing Lando again, and you were up to the job. You, you're like, sure, of course, you love Lando, clearly. No, absolutely. Well, Lando is, is me, and I'm Lando. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you think of Donnell last year playing uh, young Lando? Well, he was fine, you know, but sure. he's not me. No, <laughs> But he, he's, an, he's an extraordinarily talented young man. There's Absolutely. no question about it. <laughs> you know, it reminds me of when Samuel L. Jackson did the modern Shaft, and thank God they put Richard Roundtree there with him as Shaft, and that one moment where he says, hey, do you want to back me up to Richard Roundtree? And he's like, me? Back you up? And he just shakes his head and walks away. And I, I have that vibe with you and Lando. It's like, listen, others may come, but there's only one Billy D. And I think, uh, absolutely, man, I, I get what you're saying. Well, Richard Roundtree, to me, he's he's the original Shaft. Yes. I don't see, I can't see anybody else play Shaft except Richard Roundtree. I'm with you, sir. I haven't seen the new one yet, and I uh, even in the Samuel L. movie, like I and, said, it was good to see him. And I I love Samuel L. Jackson. I sure. think he's a great actor. But uh, but there are certain certain individuals who who come along and and create a kind of uh, persona. That you just you know it's like the original it's like an original moment. Understood. You know which came first, sir? Uh, the Colt Forty Five ad campaign or you doing "Lady Sings the Blues" in Mahogany? Oh, that uh, the Colt Forty Five came after. Okay, okay. Well, let's let's go chronologically then, and let me ask you about making those films because we mentioned Shaft, the black ploitation films as they're called. You know, were their own thing, but you were always a leading man. And I really think that um, you got a level of uh, good films and respect that as much as we all loved the Shaft films and uh, the old Jim Brown martial arts films and things like that and Superfly, you know, they were their own thing. And you, you know, you were like a Gable. I mean, you really were like a leading man that we all absolutely are like, well, of course he is. He's, my God, look at the man and look at the way he can act. Well, you know, I'm a... I've always tried to approach my life and my career in an eclectic way. Um, I always, always had. I guess I know. I know it's very difficult to explain it, but being a romantic figure on the screen was something that I always uh, enjoyed doing and wanted to do. I just wanted to create something different than what was being presented. Uh, you know, sure. on the screen. Well, I think you achieved it. I mean, my God, those those films those films are really classic films, and they they're of their time, but they uh, but they're also timeless at the same time. And I um, I, I can appreciate what you're saying. Um, well, you know, I, I don't think in terms of ethnicity. I think in terms of huh, how do I want to project this whole idea of Billy D. Williams? Yep. You know, as as an individual with my own individual point of view. Well, no question, sir. It came through. I mean, it, again, in all these projects. So, about Colt Forty Five, when that opportunity came up, was that was that you know just a fun lark to uh, to do those? I mean, they really were memorable ads. And again, you're right there, man, with Steve McQueen and Clint Eastwood and any of the the other kings of cool that I could think of of of, of the era. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the, the whole idea was to, to to really just sort of project this. Kind of a heroic figure, and uh, and uh, and uh, even with the the fragrance I had, undeniable uh, that I did through um, uh, um, what do you call it? The was it Fabergé? Perfume. 
No, no. Um, Avon. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I did that for like about I think about nine nine years. Wow. And and that was uh, did very well. But the whole idea of being first is was always very important to me. More than being number one, I always wanted the, the whole idea of being for first is much more intriguing to me. Well, and and then did you did you ever feel after doing the Star Wars films that uh, being stereotyped was a problem? It didn't seem to be. I mean, my God, then you go to uh, in the mid eighties, you're on Dynasty with Diane Carroll, and and again, that's a great romantic you know part with a with a equally powerful actor. Yeah, well, I never feel that, that I'm being stereotyped. I mean, I, these are characters I, I enjoyed doing, I wanted to do, and I thought they really projected something that, for the most part, people had never seen or experienced before with a little brown-skinned boy like me. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, a, a friend asked me, he's like, hey, ask him about his paintings. And I said, I didn't know he painted. So I went online and I, I I looked at some paints. Hey man, that's fantastic! You're like Tony Bennett. You know, we come expecting uh, you to have one skill, and then if it turns out I'm also an artist, check out my stuff. So great stuff, man. Are you are you still painting? Oh yeah, I, it's very much a part of my life. I started out as a, well. I say I started out as a painter, but in many ways I did almost start out as a painter. I mean, I I, I won major. I mean. I went to a school called the National Academy of Design for the Fine Arts, where I spent two years on the scholarship painting, and I was nominated when I was about 19 years old for a uh, Guggenheim and uh, won a Hall Garden, which is comparable to a Guggenheim. But so painting has always been very much a part of my life. Well, they're beautiful uh, paintings, and all people have to do if they don't know uh, is go on Google. And I mean, obviously, it'd be great to to see them. In an exhibit as well, do you do you ever still put them out as far as you know any uh, gallery shows or museum shows? Well, I haven't done uh, shows in in really a long time, but every now and again, uh, I have a gallery up in uh, Canada in Toronto called uh, the, the Brian List Gallery, and I'll show some stuff up there. But I haven't really done any showing. I'm thinking I might do a show uh, somewhere uh, this year. Somewhere. That's terrific. Well, you know, I know, I know. Episode nine comes out in in uh, in December, um, and I mean, you know, believe me, I don't want you to, uh, you know, you you've you've earned any sort of relaxation you want to do in your life. But do you have any other uh, projects that are coming up that you that you do want to mention? No, I'm I'm, I'm really not in a rush to do anything really, <laughs> unless it's something that's really you know super interesting. Okay, fair enough. Well, good luck to you, sir. I mean, honestly, I, I genuinely appreciate this opportunity to to speak to you, and um, really, congratulations on, on on a full body of work and and such incredible characters that are indelible to this day beyond Lando. And I, you know, mentioned several of, of them. Oh, you know, Scott Joplin, great, another great television movie you did where you got to play Scott Joplin. For God's sake! Oh yeah, that was that was a lot of fun to do. Very cool, man. Well, I, working working with UV Blake. Yeah, that wow, really that's amazing! Absolutely, sir. No, I'm well aware. For people listening that might be younger, UB Blake, this incredible man that made it to 100 and was literally one of those original ragtime guys and could speak yeah. with uh, with clarity and and knowing the people about what they were like. Oh my God, what kind? I'm sure he gave you great insight into Joplin. Well, he had the longest fingers I've ever seen on anybody. <laughs> I agree. I remember seeing his performances on television. You're absolutely right, sir. That's that's pretty amazing. Was for Bingo Long? Did you did you talk to any of the old uh, Negro League vets? Oh yeah. Well, they were in some of them were in the movie. Oh, I didn't realize a that cameos. Of, that's a, cool. lot, a lot of those guys were were uh, the uh, part of the Negro Leagues. Oh, that's fantastic! That's great. It's a it's such a funny movie, and I and and I really again that's another one that pops up on cable, and I always recommend it to to baseball fans and say, oh, you want to see a great baseball movie that's really funny, and you and Richard Pryor and and James Earl Jones and the actor I don't remember his name, but I know he was also Otis Day uh, in uh, Animal House. Uh, mm. He was the he was the mute that got hit by the ball and couldn't speak in the film. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. funny stuff, man. Really, really, really great. Well, I don't want to keep you, Mr. Williams. I, I genuinely appreciate you talking. You're going to be at Terrificon in just a couple of weeks, and that's 
the reason why we're talking. And also, I, uh, well, we, if you don't mind, real fast, uh, regarding uh, Batman 89 and you playing Harvey Dent, I know a, a bunch of us were disappointed that uh, knowing who Harvey Dent was and who he was going to become, the villain Two-Face, how much of, did you, were you aware of that when you were making that, that first movie? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, w- I wanted to play Two-Face, but uh, things just didn't work out. How was it working with Tim Burton and Nicholson and and, all, and well, I guess you didn't have many scenes or you didn't have any scenes with Nicholson, but I, a great character actor you worked with who was Commissioner Gordon, Pat Hingle. I was always a fan of his as well. Yeah, well, it was fun. No, I mean it was a very nice experience. Very cool. Well, again, you're going to be at Terrificon uh, at the beginning of August at Mohegan Sun in Connecticut, and uh, I know the fans will be lining up and uh, they'll. Uh, They'll have plenty of uh, Lando questions, and I'm sure some of the other things we covered today. So, uh, truly, thank you for your time. I, I, I hope we get a chance to meet each other at Terrificon. But uh, if not, uh, then let me thank you personally for all the great entertainment you've given me over the years. Well, come by and say hello, uh, and you have a wonderful day. That's Billy D. Williams. You know, I, I'm just uh, beside myself with the loss this week of Rutger Hauer, and uh, he and Billy D. made a great movie together, Nighthawks, and I, I can't believe that uh, in my excitement to talk to Billy D, I had forgotten to ask him about Nighthawks. It's one of my favorite early 80s movies of his. Him and Sylvester Stallone, it's a great cop action movie. Uh, it's a great look at a, a terrorist uh, and, and dealing with a terrorist here on uh, American soil. Uh, maybe a more resonant movie now than, uh, than it may, might have been uh, 30 years ago when it was made. But a uh, great loss with Rutger Hauer, another one of those fine actors in everything, Lady Hawk and Blade Runner and uh, got so many other wonderful films. I liked his work in the later years, like in uh, Confession of a Dangerous Mind with Sam Rockwell playing the uh, the German agent. And uh, hell, Morgan Edge, when he played him on Smallville, I thought he was very effective as Morgan Edge. So uh, just a, you know, a moment to uh, think about the great Rutger Hauer and his wonderful body of work. Uh, and if you've never seen Nighthawks, I, I absolutely recommend it. A fine performance of both uh, Billy D. Williams and Rucker Hauer, and Sylvester Stallone for that matter. Tremendous action movie. Go out and see it. I hope you enjoyed today's word balloon. I know it was brief. Um, I, you know, I just kind of could sense that uh, Billy D. was a man of few words. But uh, I did release another new episode today, and that's with uh, Mark Russell, one of the funniest writers in comics today. Uh, just kicked ass on uh, F- the Flintstones. All those DC Hanna Barbera books were so great, and he did two of them. He did the Flintstones, and he did the Great Snagglepuss book that I think uh, surprised and shocked a lot of people in the best way. Um, he talks about those and his brand new book from Ahoy Comics. It's called uh, The Second Coming, and it uh, postulates what if Jesus were to come back, if God were to send him back to Earth. And God's idea was to uh, maybe uh, learn an example from a great superhero. And maybe that was a way for Jesus to come back and uh, connect in a better way with people. Very funny stuff. Sure, it's controversial. uh, But uh, you know me, I I like a good controversy. And uh, Mark is a very funny writer. It was a pleasure to get to know him. And I think you'll enjoy that conversation as well. Mark Russell also on today's Word Balloon. Thanks a lot for listening today. It was brought to you by Aftershock Comics. Look, I'm digging Aftershock. They're, they do great work. And yeah, they're a sponsor. But uh, I like a lot of these books. I like Animosity. I like the Garth Ennis books that we get from them. I like uh, Baby Teeth from Donnie Cates and Cullen Bunn and Juan Doe uh, doing Dark Ark. I love Tim Seeley's Dark Red. Uh, my buddy Phil Hester doing Stronghold. Great stuff, man. Top writers and artists. Some of the brightest new stars in the creative community. Uh, Joe Pruitt's new horror anthology, Aftershock. Uh, Joe has uh, been collecting wonderful horror stories over the years from some of the top creators and presents it in this uh, new horror anthology. I'm looking forward to Cullen Bunn's Night's Temporal coming up very soon. Matthew Clickstein's You Are Obsolete. Lots of great books from Aftershock that will cut across genres and take us readers far beyond our comfort zones. In the week's end, you'll hear more talks about Aftershock books with their creators. But you don't have to wait. Go to their website. You'll find full story descriptions, preview pages, and the diamond codes on these books that I know you will want to start reading. Go to their website, and you can get those diamond codes to order the books through your local shop at AfterShockComics.com. Thanks again for listening. Thank you, League of Word Balloon listeners, for your support via Patreon. More great stuff from Word Balloon coming next week as we wrap up July, get into August. And uh, keep giving you great uh, you know, entertainment. Don't forget, Billy D's going to be at Terrificon. Got a couple more Terrificon uh, guests 
that will be coming on Word Balloon uh, leading up to that great convention. I will be there. I'll be moderating panels. I am thrilled with the subjects of these panels and the panelists themselves. Really great panels. I can't wait to share them with you here on Word Balloon. Until next time, Word Balloon is a copyright feature of Shaky Productions. Copyright 2019.